All right, we want you to get your Bibles. Let's turn to the Word of God. We're going to the book of Proverbs. That's the 22nd chapter and the 28th verse. And it reads like this. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers has set. That's the message today. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers has set. Now a landmark is an object used to mark the boundary of of a field. It could be a rock, post, stake, but in Israel they used a cornerstone which could easily be removed. And every Israelite was a landowner. And God forbid them to move that landmark. And praise God today I want to talk about some spiritual landmark, a spiritual landmark. Pray God, many people are asking a question today, why is all the trouble befalling us? All of this, that, and the other. We live in a time of a turmoil. And one of the reasons is the landmark has been removed. Pray God, man have left the principles of the doctrine of the Bible. Now the Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. How many believe that today? Man have made up in his mind that he's going to do the thing the way he want to do them and not praise God God's way. I want you to serve you notice today, beloved. This world does not belong to you. It does not belong to man. God made this world. And it belongs to God and he has every right to demand man to go according to his law and regulation. You believe it? Say amen. God forbid for man to move that old landmark. Now if you know he said ancient landmark. We're living in a day and time that man is trying to change the laws. Trying to tamper with the word of God. In fact man has made up in his mind. He's going to do what he want to do when he please. But if you notice praise God in the lesson. Praise God, that was the man by God not to move that old ancient landmark. You believe it say amen. Even preachers from the pulpit, they're trying to change the word of God. But the Bible declares in 119 Psalms in the 8th and 9th verse, said, my word is settled in heaven. That means the word of God cannot be changed. Are you listening to me? Pray that they're preaching. Oh, it doesn't take this. It doesn't take that. You don't have to live like that. But praise God, the word of God demand that man would live holy. The Bible declared Luke 4 and 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Now, if you want some peace, some joy, and some happiness, you got to line up with the word of God. Are you listening to me today? But we're living in a day and time that people don't want to hear the preacher. They listen to everything else, praise God, but the preacher and the word of God. But I'd like to ask you a question today. Bring it, why is America losing our popularity all over the world? What has happened? I want you to listen. What has happened to this country of ours? I'll tell you what, we have moved that ancient landmark. We are made up in our mind that we are not going by the principle and the teaching of the word of God, which is the Bible. Now, let, let's just use a little common sense. All right, praise God, the, the manufacturer of the Ford, they put out a manual. When you buy a new car, there's a manual that comes with it. And that manual tells you how to treat that car, to get good service out of it. And no company will back up its guarantee unless you go by it. Now, if you notice, all the principles, praise God, the good principles of man arrive from the Word of God. The Bible declares if you would live holy, praise God, he would back up his Word. Are you listening to me? All right. Now, God has given us a manual to go with this world. Now, if we want to live a victorious life in this world, then we got to go by the manual that God gave us to go with the world, and that is the Bible. You believe it, say amen. But man has made up in his mind, I'm not going that way. I'm going to move that landmark. I'm going to move it where I want it. I'm going to change things. And this is what man have done. This is when you're suffering the consequence. 
Now the Bible declares in Psalms, I want to take my time today. Psalms 2 and 1 says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? Now we're living in a time, praise God, we got more college graduates than ever. Knowledge is on the increase. But it seems that we'll become more stupid and ignorant than ever. Why? Because man has made up in his mind that he's going to do things his way and not God's way. Now the word of God tells us to treat, do unto others that we would have them to do unto us. Amen? Now if everybody would do that, there wouldn't be any need for war. We wouldn't need the police force. So now preacher, you're talking off of the deep end. Well, if we'd go by the word of God, we wouldn't need them. You be the same man. But he said, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth has set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing. Now, beloved, this is what's taking place. You know, it's dangerous to walk down the street in America. It's supposed to be the most civilized country of the world. But you go down the streets and you see jailhouse after jailhouse. Why are people trying to protect the things that they're labored for? Why do the heathen rage? Don't, don't point at Africa. Webster said heathen is one that believes not in the God of the Bible. And it seems like the majority of the people here in America has denounced God. Oh yeah, you go to church. There's a vast difference in religion and salvation. You believe it, say amen. Majority of the people that go in the church have moved the ancient landmark. They say it don't take what it took in grandma's day. What they used to preach was holiness. They don't preach that today. You have moved that landmark. God said don't move it. They're trying to sell religion. Christianity back in a corner. Then you wonder why there's so much trouble, so much sickness and disease. What have happened to our children? I'll tell you what's happening to our children. We won't raise them up like the Bible said, raise them up. We won't treat men like the Bible tell us to treat one another. Every time you turn around, somebody wants to sue one another. Amen. Tell me we're in a Christian nation. I mean, people despise the preacher. When you begin to preach holiness, praise God, then the, the establishment gets against you. If you're preaching all right to sin, to go to the ball game, go to the honky tonk, then it's all right. But when you say that, you move the landmark. God forbid us to go to those places. Bible said, come out from among them and be ye separated, says the law. Bible said, woe to them that give his neighbor drink. Yet you wonder why so many people dying on the highway of alcohol. I'll tell you why. You're using them license to make it. You're using them license to sell it. Common sense ought to tell you the man got to go stay at home when he get it in his belly. Hear me but say man. All right, people despise the word of God. They despise the law of God. They, the Bible said against God and his anointing. That means the preacher. You let a preacher get a new car. Don't let him get a Cadillac. And everybody never contribute nothing to the church while he goes is talking about it. That preacher got a Cadillac. What kind of house do he live in? But you never hear him saying nothing about that football player. He got about three Mercedes Benz sitting out there. Pray got a fine car. Nobody's saying a thing about that. Well, don't common sense tell you the Bible said if you live holy and do what he said, he would bless you. The Bible said in 50 some, all the caliber and a thousand hills belong to him. All the silver and gold belong to God. And if God's preacher stand up and preach the word of God, preach it like God will refuse to move the landmark, God said he would bless him. Hear me, say man. It's all right for the die shooter to drive a new car, but not the preacher. It's all right for the package store to man to drive a new car, but not the preacher. And don't let God begin to bless the church. Then he wants to go out and judge the church. And if you preach and hold and be tightened up on the word of God, they want to call it a cut. Well, amen. 
Now I'll admit that we got some quack preachers, but we got some quack politicians too. We got some quack doctors too. You believe it? Say mine. But God forbid us to move that ancient landmark. What was holding us yesterday is holding us now. Hallelujah. The world is worried about the offering that the church receives. But what about the offering that the football stadium receiving? Brother, if you could see it, it wouldn't be trash can. It would be a garbage can. But nobody's saying anything about that. They're saying another people on the diamond road to hell. You ever been shame on? Man has left God. Then when a crash occurs, then you want to run and say, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. You don't steal, cheat, and lie. Then when you're about to get caught, or when you get caught in a snare, you're going to run to God and ask God to move. It doesn't work like that. That must be a repentance. That's what, that heart's got to be broken. You've got to become sorry of your sin. You believe it, say mine. That's got to be a bad faith. That's got to be a turning around. You cannot live in sin and expect God to hear your cry. The Bible declared in Psalm 66 and 18, David said, If I regard a naked in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Are you listening to me? Preacher used to preach holiness. Have taken down they move that landmark, but God said, don't move it. How you listen to me? Everywhere you turn, it's sin, 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 sin. Listen, beloved. If you want God to move in your behalf, you're going to have to turn back to God. You've got to turn back to God. You've got to take that landmark and put it back where it's supposed to be. Are you listening to me? Quit stealing land from your neighbor. Are you listening to me today? Listen, beloved God, love it. I want to bring it right on down to your doorstep. A lot of times we look at a country, we ask, praise God, this country's in sin and reason I'm preaching. Pray God, I want as many that can hear me that repent and turn to God, that God will have mercy upon our country. You believe it, same man. Brother, when Daniel was down in Babylon, he prayed for Israel. He prayed for Judah. You believe it, same man. Said, oh God, we want you to forgive us of our sin and restore us. You believe it, same man. Brother, we want God to restore our country. We got to place that landmark back where it ought to be. You believe it, say, man. We got to line up with the word of God. We got to repent of our sin. You got to get right with God. You believe it, say, man. Filth and sin everywhere. Listen, beloved. God's not going to stick his hand through that field and deliver and set men and women free. Are oh, you listening to me today? Remove now the ancient landmark. You get the point today. Let's, let's look around us today. Amen. The thing we used to stand for, we don't stand for anymore. The thing, praise God, that we used to stand for, people are going to court and fighting it now. Well, amen. Look at our kids. They're going astray. No respect for the grown-up. Amen. But they'll snatch a prayer from Mother Keith as quick as they will me. No respect. A few years ago, it was unheard of, huh? Because that was a godly principle that people stood by, even though they was not saved. I wasn't saved. I wasn't brought, brought up in a church. Praise God, my mother, my dad was not saved. But brother, they taught us principles to respect one another and to acknowledge God. You believe it, say man. But this young generation don't acknowledge nothing. Why? Because they haven't been taught nothing. That old landmark has been moved. You believe it, say man. They just saying it's all right to do this. All right. They didn't pass along. That's all right for homosexuals to come in the church. Women to wear pants. Do what you want. It's all right. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Those are women's pants. They was made for women. They wasn't made for man. The Bible said, "But painting." That covers it, beloved. Pertaining men's wearing long hair, trying to act like a girl. I don't see nothing wrong with it. No, you're trying to move the ancient landmark. But God said the word is settled in heaven and cannot be removed. You believe it, say, man. The Bible said it's a shame for men to have long hair. She might want to go to the barber shop if you're going to line up with the word of God. But see, man, have changed things. America's tried to change things. 
You think we're having trouble over here in Iran? We haven't had anything yet. You think that's a disturbment? Brother prayed God until America can fall to her knees. We haven't seen anything yet. Brother pray God, that's just pocket change compared to what's going to happen later on. If God didn't let Israel by, what make you think he'll let any other ungodly nation by? Remove not the ancient landmark. Let's go back to the principle and the doctrine of the word of God. How many believe what I'm saying? I don't care how it hurt your feelings, how it hurt your daughter's feelings. The word of God is the word of God and it cannot be changed for you or me or nobody else. I know they say I'm preaching on the negative side. But you've got to get to the root of a thing. You're going to kill a tree. The best way to kill it is kill the root. Huh? Brother just said, we're going to pray. Oh, no, that don't work. That don't work. The Bible said, if you come to the altar, remember that the altar against the brother, do what? Leave that gift and go be reconciled. But people want to just jump over stuff. No, sir. I mean, it come right on down to the home. The Bible said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But the law says, it's okay, you can get seven. Move an ancient landmark. Thou shalt not fornicate. For the laws of the land, it's all right. It's all right to drink. But the Bible said, woe to him that give his neighbor a drink. You don't have to drink it. Just sell it. Just go get it. Get it for him. Huh? Moving that ancient landmark. And through this is where all the trouble comes. But oh, if we would line up with the word of God. It's come right on down to praise God being tormented of the mind. Did you not know, beloved? God gives every man an opportunity, every woman, to hear the gospel of deliverance. You're faced with making a decision. And if you don't make the right decision, then anything could happen to you. Did you know the devil could take over your mind like you're doing so many people today? If I had time, I could point out one by one some of the things that's happening to our, not only the old folk, but the young people. Did you know young people have an arthritis today? Losing their mind, going insane. Why? Because man has made up in his mind, he will not go the way of God. He will not walk like God want him to walk. Why do you think God sent his son into the world? Pray God to die, to pay the penalty, that you could be delivered, that you could be free. And it's up to you. But remember this. We'll never get by. You can get up in the... We out of the night when your neighbor is sleeping, go out there and move his landmark. He may not find it out, but there's an all seeing eye that's watching you. And it's going to come up in the day of judgment. How many believe what I'm saying? All right, we look around. Couldn't preach just exactly all what I wanted on the radio. But you look around. Look, look, look how our government. And people's of darkness are coming against the church. They, they, they don't try to boost you in nothing you're doing good. But every old smutty thing that they can say about the church, they're saying it. They'll broadcast it. Amen. Look at that fellow, praise God. I don't know what trying to preach he is, but look at that fellow down there in Sherman. All those years he's been passing down, never heard one good thing he did. But when somebody come up with some smut, smut. Huh? Why do the heathen rage? And every old ugly thing that can be said about the church and the preachers being said. Amen. Nothing, not. Pray, look at all the drug acts that have been delivered here. Amen. Oh, that's not put on the news. Then we wonder what's happening to our country. We'll move the ancient landmark. You, you let the news media come to your church and you know the main thing they want to film is the offering. The main thing they want to put the camera on is the orphan. But what about the orphan out there at the Cowboys Stadium? The politician rally. Amen. 
Nothing is said about these things. Look at that little woman, pray God, got a house full of kids, is going to the packet store, pray God, spending all her money, praise God, to buy liquor. Nothing is said about that. Well, amen. What's happening to this country? It's a time to call men and women back to repentance. It's time to call them back to the right way. Stand you in a way seeking acts for that old path. What old path? That holy way. How many believe that? Stand on your feet.